Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of Switching Stances. I am one of your hosts, Tyler, joined by my good friend, my good buddy, Ollie, aka Gaz. How's it going, mate? It's going well, man. Uh, uni's picking up, final semester. Um, yep. And we're sort of in the MMA off-season, which is convenient. It sort of times together quite nicely because I don't have to stay up late for middleweight main events or, yep. you know, women's bantamweight, um, <laughs> which is nice. It's nice to sort of have that, have, have those evenings off sometimes. Yeah. I mean, there's been, I felt like last weekend was so full of combat sports. Obviously, the, our main thing is UFC. Um, yeah. And the bigger fights with UFC. So there wasn't like a UFC pay-per-view, but there was a UFC card. There was Bellator. There was um, one championship. Yep. There was um, a great boxing fight um, that I was very, like of everything for the weekend, the thing I was most looking forward to was davis garcia to be honest sure. that was the th- that's what the most hyped i've been for a boxing match in quite a few years well it would have been mayweather mcgregor for a different reason i was excited be- for this for the boxing side of it mayweather mcgregor obviously just for the the theater Spectacle. of it but i was yeah. ex- i can't deny that i was fucking pumped for that shit i was right on that train i was like corner's gonna win um you know sure to yeah yeah um riding the wave but yeah there was a it was a Big weekend uh, of combat sports and a lot of news, a lot of stuff going on. Fight announcements, yeah. shifts around, like new fights added to. I mean, we probably don't need to talk about Bilal and and Gilbert Burns until you know next week. Um, well, we'll do the breakdown of that card. Well, 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 surely we'll do the breakdown this week because. Oh no, no, it'll be post. Yeah, no, you're right. Yeah. Yep, you're right. At the time of recording, we're recording. Yeah. What, it's Thursday. Yes. Well, it's not this weekend. It's next weekend. No, it's not this weekend. You're right. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, I'm like, what? Well, recording this week? Then why are we doing this episode? <laughs> this is totally different. Um, it's all that uni, mate. It's all the sleepers. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that is fully it. Yeah. It's brain we broken. were talking off air before about what you're doing for your final um, sort of dissertation at uni and we don't have to say it yet but i feel like once obviously the uni owns that you were saying so we can't you can't like get it out there and publish it but you could bring that knowledge and what you've written and it could be a great episode because i think just as itself it's a great podcast episode or even just for you to make a video version a shortened or it can be as long video version of, of what you wrote if you wanted to be solo but i just feel like it's a great topic and it's a topic i think we could dedicate a whole piece of content too. If you can't, you know, publish it as a as a literary piece, but you can obviously take your opinions and it be a discussion. Maybe it's safer legally if it's a discussion between you and I. Um, but I think it's a great topic, so I'm just gonna throw that at you. Yeah, no, I'd be up for it. I'd be up for it. It's a fun one. It's a fun one to write about and a fun one to learn about as well. Whilst I'm sort of in the process of it, because it's I'm I'm writing about why MMA is such a right wing space inherently. And yeah. whilst it's something that I've always sort of been aware of, it's been really interesting to read more deeply into it and to sort yeah. of understand that at a deeper level um, from so many different angles, which has been really yeah. fun. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you. It's definitely something I've always known and, and, and seen and, and noticed, but it's when you really think about it, how deep it goes and how prevalent mm. it is in MMA and I'd love to know the reasoning behind it like I'm very interested to to read it once you've once you've done so that's that's exciting yeah no it's it's a good time I mean it's, it's uni was, work but it's yeah it, mate it's better than I'm sure the other people's fucking topics that yeah exactly on. I get to write about something sure, I care so. about which is nice yeah yeah I feel like at least half those people and that's being fucking generous are writing about shit they don't give a fuck about yeah I well, they're imagine. pretending to give a fuck about it. You know what I mean? Yeah, trying to frame it in a way that makes them yeah. care. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I've started first week of fight camp. Yes. This week, proper of course. week. You know, like, I've, I'm always training and stuff, but, like, where it's sort of escalating and the intensity is escalating and the expectations are escalating. Um, and diet started too. So it's also like... We begin the we begin the cut, we begin the hard training, and it's exciting. But the like the funny thing is, I was thinking about this before 
because I sort of took the weekend to really, because I've been so busy. I'm, every weekend, stuff going on, lots of stuff with friends. There's a wedding. Like, there's just a lot coming up. Work as well, training, all this sort of stuff. Sure. And I just needed the weekend. And I was housing and looking after my best mate's dog while he's on his honeymoon. And I took the weekend, just relax and just reset. And I knew I'm like, I mentally need to like get in the zone because I haven't been thinking about this fight. Like I know it's there and I know it's coming, but like my real focus hasn't been on it. And I need to switch my brain from where I am to that's now my main priority for the next seven, eight weeks. And it was good to get my brain there and, and, just sort of into get war rid mode. Of, sort of let, yeah, well, let all the stuff that's been going on, the really happy stuff, really good stuff, really non war mode related things happening. And yeah. Let that settle let and digest pass. it properly. Like, I just needed to let them digest. So I needed that time to stop, think, reflect, enjoy. Um, you know, I literally just like hung, hung out with my girl and, and our friend's dog and just chilled both, both days, just relaxed. Um, didn't do too much. Just caught, got some sun, drank some coffee, chilled, ate my favorite food, cause can't enjoy that. No, that, no, uh, no, no. Is wings, that wings? No, oh yeah, no, bro, yeah. It was wings. It was wings, and I knew that last bite I had. I was like, this is it for. Me. It's, <laughs> oh. it's gonna fucking torment me. Um, but it's good. Like weight's already good. I'm very happy. This shouldn't be like too bad. And I love cooking too, so I've just been like coming up with new things and looking up new recipes so I can at least make this food that's pretty much the same sort of stuff a bit different each time and a bit more fun and a mm. bit more exciting so I don't get bored. Um, but yeah, definitely getting in that mindset, man. Definitely just getting zoned in what the focus is going to be. And I think about the fun. I'm like, man, I am not afraid to fight at all. I have no fear when I think about this fight. Just excitement. I'm just fucking pumped. But I have a lot of fear about camp. Different. Way yeah, more scared yeah, of training camp, bro. Way more scared of training camp and going to training than fighting. It's way harder. <laughs> yeah, well, because it's, just, it's like, a consistent effort, I suppose, rather than that. Oh, what no. Is it? Well, I mean, How long are you fighting I mean, for? Is it six minutes or is it nine minutes? It'll be probably six minutes. Mm-hmm. Probably eight, in and out, eight minutes. It's going to be quick. Okay, um, yeah, yeah. This, this, this first Girls fight's all Muay, Muay Thai. It's all Muay Thai rules. So it's not an MMA fight. It's a Muay Thai it's a kickboxing fight. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, it's... Um, oh, no, I'm like, sure, it's it's the the long span of it, which is part of it for sure, the mental side of it. But, it's, but dude, no, it's the individual sessions. That are way harder than the fight's going to be. Sure. What, just grueling? Dude, you get pushed. Yeah. Like, to to pretty fucking insane levels of yourself that you didn't think you could go. And the intensity of that environment. Like, you go to dark places. And I've seen it in my teammates. And knowing I've got to go there, and I'm on the journey there, it's both exciting and terrifying. Whereas the fight's just exciting to me because what will be, will be. And it's very short, you know, like in comparison to you train for two, three hours a night. Different. Sure. Different. Because I'll finish work and go, oh, Jesus fucking Christ. I'm about to go to three hours of hell, three hours of darkness before I even get home. Yeah, right. Which yeah, you just right. don't want to do. Yeah. Yeah. And once you're home, you're just like, like I'm now. It's 9.30 p.m. I just finished a, yeah, a two-hour sesh after work. Long day. Long day by the end. And then you're just cooking dinner and pretty much I had half an hour. I sort of was horizontal scrolling through social media for half an hour. And then we're here, you know. This is what we do. And I love it. But I'm definitely excited for a break definitely excited for yeah. like booking a trip yeah. to hawaii um yes towards the end of the year or the second mid mid sec like third quarter of the year um so that'll be good something to look forward to something yeah it's to exciting like. you can sort of get away. i mean oh, i was gonna say you can get away to the sun but like obviously i mean <laughs> obviously yeah yeah you're in australia you live in 
I um, live in Australia. I live in and, Queensland, the Sunshine State. And that's your summer, isn't it? So. Mm. No, it'll be just after our winter. Oh right, okay. Just after our winter, but winter too. We have two. It, where I live, we have about two weeks of winter a year. Sure. Yeah. Okay, that makes yeah. sense. Well, I I could I could go to the beach twelve months of the year, bro. Yeah. No, I can't do that. In the can't ocean. do that here. We'll be no, miserable we, for no. ten out of twelve months. Our oh, winter here is the best because it's not winter. It's twenty four degrees Celsius and sunny, blue skies, clear, beautiful. Sure. You know, it's just glorious weather here in winter. My favorite time of year because it's not cold. It's like the perfect middle. And then summer is just hot as fuck. Yeah. See, we we get day. Our summers are sort of like more of a dice roll as to whether it's actually going to be summer today or if it's going to be yeah. kind of just miserable again. You know, you'll get you'll get two weeks of it being beautiful and like perfect temperature, no issues with um, it being too hot or too cold or like too windy. You'll have two weeks of it yeah. just being perfect, and then for the rest of the summer, it'll be either rain or just a bit shit and cloudy or sunny but also windy, and so it doesn't really fucking work with the sun. You know, you you can't yeah. like go out and like enjoy it because it's just windy and cold anyway. Yeah, I just started <laughs> laughing and giggling. Because um, you and I are talking about weather, I'm <laughs> switching stances. <laughs> I just had that like moment. I was like pulled back. I'm like, oh, oh god, we're talking about weather. <laughs> we're talking about the weather, mate. That's how you know there's fucking nothing to talk about. Yeah, <laughs> no, there's plenty to talk. There's plenty there is, there is. About, there's there's, there's announcements, the but there's announcements. Yeah. But like, we are f- firmly in the off season. Yeah, we've got a couple of weeks, but, but I mean, to be fair, we had such a banger period of time yeah 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 earlier yeah, but pretty it, much from volk islam to to now has been just absolute yeah. bangers um other than a few weeks you know a few shit yeah weeks. Um, yeah but there's always been yeah. something to look forward to whereas now yes. it's like a long a long road to ufc 290 yeah yeah there is you're right we've got two pretty average pay-per-views on the horizon before mm-hmm. we get to international fight week july banger just the card of the year right now i mean oh yeah it's 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 perth 2.0 it's australia card of the year 2.0 it's the second of three australia cards because there's a sydney one at the end of the year though yes this is in las vegas las vegas nevada and people like but tyler what do you mean straight card well it's owned by the aussies well it's owned by the anzac 100 percent. shout out to anzac day that was this past week 25th april um shout out to to the anzacs um, and we because we have Dan Hooker, a Kiwi fellow, brethren on the card as well as a million Aussies, mm-hmm. Jack Della Maddalena, Robert the Reaper Whitaker, and the Goat Pound for Pound King Alexander the Great Volkanovsky defending his featherweight title. You know, it's so, so exciting. That's a, a that's a banger. That's about. Yeah. Well, I mean, I feel like the end of this episode. I want to talk about that. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I think I think we'll get to it with um just like new fight announcements, yeah. news part. Um, yeah. Um, let's start with this past weekend. Okay. Um, this past weekend. Well, actually, you don't let's wanna, go you don't back. Don't want to touch quickly, on Holloway. Let's just very quickly touch on Holloway and Allen, um, because I want to know how you scored it. I did not watch it live. I watched it. Um, after okay. the fact, I knew who won. Sure. Um, and I went then back and watched. So I don't know how that affects my scoring. I had it 3-2 Holloway very comfortably. Yeah, I would agree with that. I had it. I had round two to Arnold. Um, and I also had round five to Arnold. I know that there's a lot of controversy. There's a lot of controversy about that because Arnold got dropped in the f- literal final second. Oh of that no, round. you're right. No, I get that to all the way. No, I get that. Lit- to all the way. Literally the final second of that round, he he yeah. threw himself out of position and got clicked, clicked, clocked. Um, but it's one of those where I'm like, he what? I don't know how hurt he really was in that moment. And I know we're doing like um, we're doing like assumption science 
I don't which, know how hurt he was. Well, hurt enough to get fucking dropped, cunt. No, but That's here's the thing, he man. Was. Here's the thing, man. If you watched, if you watched that moment, he's like, he's doing, the, he's doing the Ricardo Lamas thing, and he's like throwing heavy. He throws himself out of position. Um, he he gets he gets hit. He gets wobbled a little bit. Throws oh, himself out of position hard. with an overhand I don't, I think and gets hooked. English bias. I might be. I'm. Hey, man. I might be. Um, and I, I like totally hey, don't. I, I totally don't care about right. giving that round to Holloway. I think you can totally give that round to Holloway. Um, but I would also say, does a knockdown in the final second discredit Arnold winning comfortably the minutes of that round? Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe I'm totally I don't wrong know. in my in my thinking because I had it three one going into the fifth. Yeah, I had it three one going into the fifth, and then I was like, I don't really. Now that I think back, yes. I think I was fine with the fifth either way it went. I think I was giving it to Holloway, so maybe I had a full one. But yeah. Like, I was more Which thinking is totally if valid. you gave it to Alan, sure, but it was already 3-1 going into the fifth. This is how I felt. And it's how Alan's corner felt. They told him he needs to knock him out. Yeah, 100%. He needs to finish yeah. the fight. And you know, they... Alan, Alan's spoken it since and been like, I didn't feel like a winner. Um, You know, I, I knew... He was like, I was, he was like, I was surprised didn't at win. some of the scorecards. He was like, I thought I won two and five. And he also thought he won four, which is, like, valid. I get that. And it's one of those fights where it was one on the slimmest of margins, where you can you can have, justifiably, I think, a 48-47 to Allen. And I also think you can justifiably have 50-45 Holloway. I mean... I don't know if I agree with that. I, I, look, I know I, what I, you're trying to say, that there were slim margins, but... I think if you look close, and I think even live, I felt pretty comfortable. I'm not saying it was like a domination round, but I just felt like I know who won the round. And I, I think don't, I think three of those rounds were Holloways, and I don't, I just don't see how it was any other way. Sure, they were close-ish, they were close, but I know who won that round, and it was Max Holloway. And yeah, I don't no, want I mean, Max to win. I want Volk to have fresh opponents. I don't want Holloway same. to just be sitting there forever. I But it was nice, I'll tell you what. Because Max Holloway used to be one of my favourite fighters. But then for the last three years, he's been fighting Volk, and I've just fucking had to hate him. Yeah. I've, I've sort of forgot how much I like Max Holloway. Yeah. Because I've was... been, like, designed to not like him for the last three years. Yeah, Plus 100%. Years he's been fighting, yeah, he's been fighting, I think, both of our favourite fighters. So it's been it's been hard. I mean, I've been enjoy I enjoyed him in the Rodriguez performance, but yep. it was one that didn't show the best of him really. I don't think. Yeah. I think he looked like he was losing more of a step than maybe he had. Um and I yeah. I still I still stand by it. We talked a little bit last time about primes and where Holloway's out with his prime. And I still believe that he's on the downward trend. But I, I think agree. he's. Yeah, I think he's adapting his fight style to fit that. You know this. This yeah, all-around no, performance was yeah, I, I, he's, smart. He's past his prime. I think Max Holloway is past his prime. But that doesn't mean he can't win and challenge for world championships because that's the level he is, and that's his yeah. his his fight IQ and his way, like you said, to adapt to his age. But he's been fighting a long. Yes, he's young-ish, but he's been fighting a very long time. Yeah, in five years, age. he's not young. Like, Jose Aldo is about 80,000 years old in five years. And he was, like... Jose Aldo in five years was old when he fought Conor McGregor. Yeah. Let alone now. You know what I mean? But Jose's not that old, really. When you look at his age, he's, what, 35? Even if that? How old is Jose Aldo? Yeah, he's... he's. I think he might be 36 now. I'm not sure. He's 36. Yes, you're right. Yeah. He's, th- he's 36. Bro. But only in... Yeah. Now he's thirty six. Yeah, was he was he thirty six? He's retired, retired from UFC MMA and UFC and boxing now. Yeah, you know, he's not that old. No, no, he's obviously past his prime. And but also, like, he, he was felt like, like he was old seven years ago when he was twenty nine. Yeah, and he also totally could have been winning. He could have totally got a title shot in yes. you know whilst in, in bantamweight end, whilst past his prime. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. It's a great example. Great example. 
Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, well, I but, mean, I thought it was a, I thought it was a great performance from Holloway. I really, yeah, it definitely was. Like to see like his his will to win was back. Mm-hmm. He, he, just being able to see him do his thing and get that confidence and get in his rhythm. Um, it was nice to see, and it was nice to root for him. I still thought Allen did really well. Yes. I was very impressed with 100%. Allen. Um, I thought, I mean, he obviously did better than like Calvin Carter did, um, and many others have done. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I don't, I think it just showed, I think Allen will do well for this fight. I yeah. hope he has the opportunity for this to be a good thing. Um, and it will. So I hope. I I'm confident. I hope so. In Alan's really mentality, that he's not someone to look at this fight and go like, "Oh, what? Come on, man!" But he he yeah. spoke about it and he was like, "I was expecting. We planned the entire camp around a Max Holloway who's going to come out. He's going to jab a lot. He's going to get in my face. You know, who's who's been on the back of a dominant dominant smushing against Volkanovski, and is going to want to prove himself and come back with this. Yep. I'm the best boxer in the UFC, baby." You know, yeah. <laughs> I want to, I want to, you know, again. I want to kill someone. <laughs> I, I, you know, I, I thought he would, Alan, uh, Alan was like, yeah, I thought he was going to come back as this sort of force of nature that we'd have to weather. And he so didn't. And what <laughs> what made me laugh was um, the entire sort of build up to this fight. I, I was watching back some Holloway and... The thing that was obviously Holloway's a lead hand happy fighter. He loves to build off of his jab and throw his jab first. He leads a lot of his combinations with a jab. And what always troubles him with southpaws is people just stopping his jab because then once you stop his jab, he can't really get going. And that, that's something that Volkanovski worked on as well to a different extent where he'd he'd circle away from the jab, circle towards Holloway's power. And it just meant that Holloway couldn't touch him a lot of the time. Yeah. Um. And so I was like, oh, that's interesting, especially given Alan has that sort of high elbow guard that he'll he'll roll over. And so I'm just thinking, you know, if Max is going to be trying to jab and he's going to be jabbing into Alan's elbow all the time, that's going to stop a lot of stuff. And then that'll be interesting to see build. And Holloway just comes out of Southpaw immediately. And it's like, OK, well, that entire dynamic's gone now. Yeah. You know, yeah. He's, he's, he's just like able to fight in Southpaw just as competently now yeah and so it just it's became totally different an orthodox, totally versus orthodox different style, style matchup it's, yeah it's a totally different style to yeah um fight at southpaw and that mentality so when you're a southpaw and you come up against another southpaw it can be a bit of a mind fuck because you're yeah. so used to being that person that has that advantage where it's about the footwork which you're used to as a southpaw mm. where you're always thinking about where your foot position is um, and being on the outside um, of, of their lead leg, whereas mm. now it's close stance. When it's orthodox and orthodox, you're way more squared up when you want to land those yeah. shots, squared up in front. Um, so it's a totally different footwork sort of thinking. If you're a southpaw and another southpaw comes out, then all of a sudden it's not about where the feet are. It's not about being on the out. Well, it's about where the feet are, but it's not about having your feet on the outside. It's about actually being squared up. Totally different way to throw. Totally different angle it can be a bit of a mindfuck to get used to. So um, it's one thing to learn Southpaw competently. It's another thing to learn Southpaw like it's orthodox. Yes, 100%. And then and so, you, as the fight wore on, you saw Holloway slipping back into that orthodox, like consciously, not as a bad habit emerging. Oh, for sure. It was because he's, he's, um, he's already got the rhythm. He's found the range, yeah. he's found the timing in Southpaw. And now we can switch back and mix it up. And he, he's yeah, just, give himself different. He's weapons. given himself that time to totally, yeah, exactly. He set it up. He set the traps. He's he knows where he's safe to to do that. So it was really yeah. it was it's a smart smart fight from Max Holloway yeah, and from um it, it was just it was an experienced win is what I'll put it down to yeah hundred um, percent it was it was it came down to who was more experienced in that fight. Um, and, and Max Holloway is obviously just such leagues above Allen, but still Allen did so well in spite of that. Like, it's not like Yair Rodriguez that did really well also against Max, but Yair has been towards the top for a while. This was Allen's Breakout. biggest fight by a lot. Like, yeah, he's fought Dan Hooker, but that's it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, he's fought some great, obviously great guys, but not this level. No. Not this level. No. And this is such an enormous step up, and he, he, he did admirably. So I'm, I'm thinking... You haven't fought the Giggers 
the Carters, the Emmets, the Taporias of the world, get him a good win. Uh, yeah. And then he's right back there. He's right back I there. I think I think probably the winner of Emmett versus Taporia makes sense or Ortega makes sense to me. Either of those two. I think Ortega's a good fight. I don't want either of them to lose. I like No, Brian I like them I both. Like Ortega, so I'm not really keen on that fight, but um give Arnold Allen um Carter or Giga. And here's the thing, right? Give him Giga. The... Give him Giga. Give him That'd be, Giga. I mean, that, that would be funny. <laughs> Alan will fuck him up. Yeah, he would. Absolutely. Smush him, yeah. 100%. Yeah. So I reckon um, that's the fight. But what's what's good about the current state of Featherweight as well is that losing to Holloway in this manner doesn't put Alan back at all. He's still one, ti- he's still one fight away from a title shot. Because who um, else is there? It's no. Well, I, still, I still think if he beats Ortega, I, I guess it, de- it depends who he fights. If he beats sure. Ortega, yes. But if he fought Giga, no. I think it I depends know, on who he beats. He doesn't get a title shot beating Giga, bro. He fucking doesn't. I, he, I, he, if he beats Carter, maybe. Beats but like, Emmett, maybe. My my beats, question then is who else? Beats is a Korean there, Zombie, man? no. No, yeah. I mean, like title well, shot zombie is to... tricky, but like. Well, Emmett's fighting fighting Taporia, bro. If Taporia KOs Emmett in the first, yeah, he, I think yeah, I think because I think Emmett Tepori just fought is the for the interim title. I think Inter- Taporia is the only fought... other one that can go for it, really. Yeah, or Emmett could easily go for it if he beat Taporia. Emmett just fought for the interim. Oh. If Volk beats Yaya, you could definitely give it to Emmett. They won't. I just I'm so him. uninterested in seeing Emmett fight for the title. Yeah, well, he won't. I don't think he will. Well, Tapori is not going to lose to Emmett. <laughs> Emmett's Tapori is going to knock out Josh Emmett. Ma- yeah, I mean, probably. He will. It's it's one um, that makes um, me nervous. I, for I promise you. I promise you, he will. No, bro. Tapori is hot. He's throbbing. He's got this. <laughs> yeah. What? Is he not? <laughs> just... He looks like the hottest Bond villain of all time. No, no, no. It was, it was throbbing. Look, <laughs> it's throbbing that got he me. He is. He's, he's young and throbbing. He's tan. He's hot. Like, you know what I mean? He has lashes for days. Yeah. You no, know? he is. He's a good looking man. Yeah, he is. He looks also evil deep down. Yes, like yeah. He's a dark spirit. Like, he looks like he, he tortures people. Sort of like, like a DCU he looks villain. Like... No, I, no. God, no. No, he looks like a, like... James Bond villain, like no. a Skyfall villain, he's like not, a Casino he's not. Royale villain. I don't know. Hold on. Let me pull up here. Let's put Tapuria. Let's have a look. Bruh. No, he's too. He's too what? He's I don't know. Bad. He's too small for Bond villain. How dare you? How dare it's you true. Know? It's true. We don't judge I can't people see him. on size. I can't see him in a suit. It's not the size that counts. Gaz, all right? Uh, I'm glad you're telling me that. <laughs> <laughs> I feel really reassured, man. Thanks. Yeah, yeah, good. I'm glad. Um, I, I do want to touch on Edson Barboza versus Billy, Billy Quarantillo. Quarantillo? Quarantillo? I don't know. Yes. One of them. I'm going to get Quarantillo. I sure didn't fucking watch it. Oh, you no. for are you? Re- oh, no, nah, bro. I only watched because I was at the wedding the whole weekend. For I got sure. So that dude, I was That's shattered, it. and I only watched Alan Max because I thought we had to podcast that week. I'm like, fuck, yeah. we have to talk about this. That's the only reason I watched it, or else okay. I probably would never have watched it. Wow. Okay. I was shattered yeah. that weekend. I was absolutely shattered. Okay, so Barbosa Quarantillo is it starts off looking kind of how you'd expect it. What I expected was. Barboza. I don't even know who is... won, to be honest. Okay. I don't even wow. Know. Wow. I don't okay. even know. Okay. I don't know was. how you missed that, dude. It was sensational. Yeah, I was well. I feel like I was well off social media. Yeah, for you must have been. A good, that, a good, like, five days. That kind of went big. Um, yeah. But you, you start I might have, off. I like, posted or said something, but yeah, I didn't see this. Sorry. Go on. No, that's all right. Um, but Quarantillo comes out with his sort of typical pace and pressure style of fight which is what Barboza hates the most <laughs> um he can't seem to deal with people just coming at him intelligently cutting the ring pushing him against the cage um he really struggles with it and he looks yeah. like he's struggling with it for most of the fight he still looks fast which 
I don't know what I was expecting. Or maybe I was expecting him mm. to look a little bit more washed. Um, yes. Which, don't get me wrong, he is. But <laughs> yeah, I was expecting him... His, his fast twitch muscle looked so fucking... His leg kicks, his kicks to the body were just like... Bup, 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 you know, there. Yeah, Barbosa's um, a specimen, bro. Yeah, he's he's insane. And yeah, Corantillo ducks in on a takedown or against the cage. Um, not even, like, badly set up or anything. He's just against the cage and ducks down. Yeah. And Barboza knees him in the face, and it's over. Just chins him completely. And it was absolutely beautiful. It reminded me of the Dariush fight, I where Dariush, Dariush set one. yeah, Dariush set up the whole thing with that jab duck. Yeah. And in the third round, Barboza was like, okay, I see what you're doing, and flying knee him. And this time, he just got there even quicker. Um, yeah, I, I didn't pick Barboza to win, but... No. I wanted him to, and I'm love that he did. That's yeah, tremendous. Yeah, it's stuff. really cool. It's really cool that he's done it. Um, I feel like I need to pull it up right immediately. Yeah, like I'm a Billy Q fan. Terrific. I like oh, me too. I like Billy Q. But it, but like it's Bob one of those where more. it's like, yeah, it's one of those where you're like, man, can't hate that. Can't hate that at all. Like, no. so cool. Such a cool. Barbosa has this uncanny ability, even in his fight terms, old age, to really punish a level change. He's so good at that. Mm. It's such a like such a niche little skill of his, but he's so good at picking up when people try to duck in on him and then making them eat shit for it. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. I mean, you can't be doing it as long as he's been doing it where that's his specialty. And not just be able to nail it. He's a hundred percent of the time. He's a master at it. Yeah, and as as Quarantillo is sort of regaining consciousness and having his hand held by the ref, um, Bobo has just sort of stood there like, "Hey, man, um, I noticed this is a thing that you do a lot. I've been training my entire camp to punish this one level change, just so you know." <laughs> which was That's... a bit like, which was like cool. It's like, man, it's cool that your camp are still doing right by you and because you a lot of the time you'll see old fighters camps start to take advantage of them and sort of use them for paychecks yeah. and just send them out to war with sort of the old tricks you know are like you, you know what you're doing man you've been around for a long time you know kind of how to get through it it's cool that barbosa's yeah. camp are still actively drilling um things into him where he can punish tendencies of his opponents rather than just relying on natural ability and skill and savviness to get through yeah dude i've just got this fight up now i'm yeah already i'm like fuck should have watched it yeah yeah 100 percent. they're going this at is... it bro i'm like two and a half minutes to... oh there it is yeah oh god there it is yeah 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 back in one. first one yeah let's let's pull that back dude what happened? He throws the uh, like. Oh, he switched. He switched stance. Switching stances. Oh, yeah. god. And Billy's like patting the ref on the back. No nonsense. Yeah. Keith Peterson in there stopping it. Billy doesn't oh. know where he's at. There's me reacting to a fight live. Yeah, um, I just re- I just went and rewatched it. It's hot. Oh, like. One of those that makes you feel a bit sick in the best way possible. Oh, oh, God. Wow. It's a Barboza, bro. Yeah. On all the gear. For sure. You yeah, oh, yeah. Manage. No, no, no. He looks Jeez. like he's carved out of wood. Yeah, dude. Out of marble. Yeah, lucky, yeah. Lucky to out of wood. What? No. It's a Barboza? Yeah. <laughs> How dare you? How dare you? Um, this <laughs> fucking card this weekend, I just realised. Song, Song Yadong and Ricky Simone are fighting? Yeah, they are indeed. They are that, indeed. Man, that card, I'm ju- looking at the card now. That's terrible. No, I'm not talking about this. I refuse. I only, I mean, yeah, I think it's right. I don't have much to talk about with Song Yadong and Ricky Simone. Because I don't know, I don't know much about Ricky Simone. Like Song Yudong, no, yeah. I, I've got stuff to talk about with Song Yudong because I've watched him enough. 
Um, I watched him all in the build up to his Sanhagen fight. Um, he's good, but he switching st- uh, not switching stances. That's us. Heavy hands. Um, <laughs> we're talking about this. Um, how he still very much feels like a prospect, in that he's he's at Team Alpha Male, and it's I'm a little unsure as to whether that's the right place for someone who's trying to come up at the moment or to, or someone who's like done their coming up really who's like competitive yeah. in the upper echelons of a division um cuz he's he's good he's good at scrambling he's good on the bottom like he's good at getting up you can't really hold him down very well he's good at defending takedowns and not even letting them get to the ground um but he's he's a little plodding in the fact that he he'll move and move and move and move and then when he wants to throw he'll set himself down and then he'll throw and it's obviously he's doing that to get as much power into his punches as possible and he's he's a heavy hitter for sure yeah he's got legit knockout power but he's someone that kind of suffers in the movement aspect um just because you can kind of predict when he's going to stop moving so who are you picking song you don't I don't, I don't know enough about Ricky Simone. It's the sort of thing is like the only when I think of know, Ricky Simone, I think of Uriah Faber in Sacramento. Yeah, right. Because that's the thing you is know? that he's he's a. I know Ricky's. I've watched Ricky Simone's other fight and fights. I know he's great, but he's not yeah. someone I remember. If that makes sense, like I've I've seen half a, like half a dozen of his fights. Yeah, but I can't recall a single one of them other than Uriah Faber. Yeah, I've seen this. I must have seen the Kelleher fight. And I must have seen the... Well, I know I've seen the Jack Shaw fight. And I've I've seen the Faber finish. And I saw the uh, Dvalishvili fight as well. Um, so we know that he can keep a pace because he fought Marab and won that, even if he was losing all of it up until the final bit. Um, the Jack Shaw fight, he punished Jack quite well like that looked he looked really good in that fight um it's tricky man because what do we know we know that he can keep a pace and we know that he's consistently good he's beaten some like good guys for sure you know a loss to Rob Font isn't really any shake on you Faber's a bit of a (laughs) a bit of a like (laughs) a bit of a poor performance on your behalf but yeah. <laughs> um, you know, there's a reason that Faber worked in that fight. Um What make what like yeah. if thing is right is that Team Alpha Male, if they are anything, they are wrestling and an overhand. And yeah. and well, while Song definitely while true. Song Yudong isn't a wrestler, he sure has an overhand. And I wonder if you can just clock Ricky with it the same way that Faber did. Especially as Faber has knocked him out, like you'd expect Faber to be game planning quite heavily with Yudong to be like, "Hey, this is what I did." If he's the same guy that he was, you know, he's gonna get clocked by it again. So it's tricky. I, I mean, I think Ricky Simone's evolved in his. More I think so fights, too, one hundred percent. Because I've watched him, I just can't recall them. But I recall being like, "Man, Ricky Simone's really come a long way." You know, he's twenty yeah. and three. He's got a phenomenal record, yeah. and losing to Uriah Faber. I mean, Uriah Faber's a legend. He's a Hall of Famer. Yeah, exactly. He's a former like, world champion, not UFC, but, you know, uh, there was no div- good, you know, good as, featherweight yeah. division at that time. So yeah, as good as. as good, uh, yeah, I, I think so. I mean, anyone that knows the sport knows. Yeah. Yeah, we're really spending way too much time talking about this fucking fight. Um, I mean, dude, it, 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 it is. Because mullet. Yeah. Because mullet. That's why I'm <laughs> Ricky Simone. That's I'm also going to pick Ricky Simone. I think that... Yudong needs Record to evolve. <laughs> I think that Yudong needs to evolve a bit, and he yeah, hasn't done so yet. Yeah, that's true. Doesn't have a mullet as well. Um, yeah. And you know what? We managed to get through all of that without making a single dong joke, which is good. I yeah, think. that is super good. Super good. Um, um, I'd like to very, I'd like to very briefly touch yeah, on. Yeah. A touch on Sergei Pavlovich versus Curtis Blades. Um, 
I mean, obviously, I'm I wish an... we'd. I was so annoyed. I'm like, fuck, I wish we recorded last week. Yeah, it would have been so I funny. Because I know how on Curtis's nut you are, and I would have said the exact. I would have said this. Sergey's going to fuck him up in the first round. Mm hmm. I was like, I think it was Jared telling me the odds on it. I'm like, how was Sergey the underdog by so much? Put your money on him. He's going to beat Blades. Blades ain't shit. He sucks. Okay, so I don't rate my, him like you rate thing. him. Here's my thing, right? He's, I think he's good. I think he's probably one of the more well-rounded, better heavyweights. The his ish, Curtis yeah. Blades' issue, and I would have said this in the pre-fight, but I would have just been convinced that he'd overcome it. Um, Blades' issue is that he fucking sucks. <laughs> when he starts fighting power punches, you can just stop. You can just stop. I know. I knew you were gonna say that. That's why I laughed. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Fuck. You know. What <laughs> He's he he really kind of shits the bed when he starts fighting power punches. So you can time him on things. And Garnu, um, Derek Lewis, and now Pavlovich. Well, Stand up is questionable. Well. Yeah, like like he's he's like a competent heavyweight boxer who will occasionally which isn't it. saying a lot because what no do we it's not know? saying a lot what do we know heavyweight suck yeah heavyweight like, suck it's one of the key rules here at switching stances it is one yeah. of our isms is heavyweights fucking suck i feel like that we need we like our own know. little our own little clubhouse rules white you know whiteboard yeah, sort of yeah. thing that you had yeah we do we need one of the one of the key rules here at switching stances one of the key laws Rules to live by, I guess. True truths, you know. Death, mm-hmm. taxes, and heavyweights fucking suck. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, that's just how it is. So you say what you want about Curtis Blades and his resume and his athletic background, but he is a heavyweight, and therefore mm-hmm. he sucks too. Yeah, and I th- think he sucks a lot more than Sergey, and that came to be true. I think it's a it's a real shame that he does as well because Pavlovich has looked horrendous on the ground the only time he'd ever been put there, which is by what was meant to be a layup in Alistair Overeem. Um, you know, someone who with a very clearly declining chin, um, who was expected you would think to be knocked out by Pavlovich. That's sort of what they were going for. And yeah. And and Overeem just sort of put him on his back. Wasn't even on him. Was sort of standing over him. Pavlovich didn't try to recover guard. He didn't try to do any... He literally lay there like he'd hit his head or something. Um, well... He lay, like he, he lay there and just did nothing. And then mm. Overeem started elbowing the fuck yeah. out of his face. I don't care and what it was horrible. Says, I raid Overeem. I raid Overeem. I know he's a heavyweight and therefore he sucks. But I raid Overeem. I raid Overeem. For but it's a sucking heavyweight. It's, it's the principle of he got put on his back and he didn't try to do anything. Yeah. And I was like, oh, okay. Well, Curtis Blades can put you on your back. Um. You're gonna like, and he's he, you know, Curtis Blade knocked out over him with elbows and ground and pound. I sort of saw a similar thing happening. Um, with Pavlovich just getting taken down and elbowed into smush. No. But no, uh, Blades decided he'd. What was interesting. Um, is that Blade decided he'd have a boxing match until he got hurt, which was really odd. He was yeah. sort of landing a bit on Pavlovich, like, which maybe gave him confidence that he shouldn't have had because Pavlovich is hittable. You know, he does sort of drop his yeah. hands to swing. He's got a chin on him. He, yeah, chin on him. yeah, yeah, yeah. Can't, He's taking big can't shots. That. He took big shots from Ty to Avasa too. Yeah. Ty landed a few. Yeah. Fucking tell you who hits hard. Tied to Avasa, a lot fucking harder than Curtis Blades hits. Yeah, hundred percent. And I, I don't know what Sergei's Blades was like, really nah, expecting. Brad him, and it, I found that disrespectful. But you know what he did to Curtis Blades was fine. I just, I don't know. And it makes me feel better Blades every time he does expecting. it to someone. The fact that he did it to Lewis, then Tyler's pissed, then did to Blades. I'm like, okay, this is okay. This is better. Yeah. You know, I don't like yeah. Curtis Blades. I no, just, I gathered. It's a real shame. I'd like to. I just think he's the... boy. I just think he's who gives a fuck, Curtis. Like, and when people talk about how good he is, I'm like, based on fucking what? I don't know what Every you're not saying, Every time it's man. sort of a big fight, he fucking loses. 
He but based he, on what? Man, he beat the piss out of um, Alexander Volkov. Okay. So I like, like Volkov. I think Volkov's good for a heavyweight. Do you? I don't. I think Volkov's so who, who do you think are good heavyweights, dude? Oh, just what God, did we just you... say? <laughs> the... oh, none of them! None of them! That's the point! What do you mean? Not even Aspinall. Which one do you think are good? We just established <laughs> they all suck. We, yeah. Well, I don't think any of them are good. You've got, you've got to judge yeah. by, like... You've got to judge if by, like, the division. I, the only heavy... There's three heavyweights in history I think are good, and none of them fight anymore. Mm, can I guess? None of them fight anymore. Can I guess? Guess. Guess. Sorry, For... one of them fights, and it's obviously John Jones, I think, is obviously good. Okay. So you you got two more? He doesn't suck. And I hate John Jones as a person. I fucking hate him. But he doesn't suck as a fighter. Let's not pretend he does. Um, yeah, who are the, guess the other two. Uh, Ngannou? No. No, you don't think Ngannou was good? sucks. Okay, I think cool. Ngannou sucks ass. Um, yeah. Okay. Mark Hunt? No. Mark, I love Mark to death. But he oh, no. He was good. I think he was good for the division. Again, like... Well, good for, like, a name. He put on fun fights. He's an amazing... Like, I love him. I love Mark Hunt. But you're talking about, like... I think he'd... Fighter? I think he'd beat most of these, like, modern-day power punchers. Off the mark. I'll give you a hint. He's a former Olympian. Who the fuck was a... And a double champion. Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah, <laughs> you know I mean, DC, Daniel yeah. Cormier? Daniel yeah. Cormier doesn't suck. Daniel no. Cormier is one of the greatest of all time. Yeah, of course. I fuck, I fuck with DC hard. Love DC. He's great. He's your second then, because I, I would have got to DC, but I don't know who. Kane, your Kane Velasquez. Kane. Yeah. Okay. Fair. Yeah. I've not actually watched Kane in and any Kane performance never, apart from the Ingar Never game. got to. Yeah, Kane never got to live up to his full potential. He was just ruined no. by injuries. His whole no. career was ruined by injuries. He was. In his prime, like Brock Lesnar, JDS days, like he didn't suck. Yeah. Cain Velasquez, Daniel Cormier, John Jones. That's about it. Maybe Stipe sometimes hasn't. Yeah, sucked. I think. You know, I, and like... I love Stipe. Love Stipe, greatest heavyweight of all time. But doesn't mean he doesn't suck like other heavyweights. He still sucks <laughs> now. Oh didn't yeah. Didn't always suck. I, I guess like Stipe so. didn't used to suck, but Stipe sucks. They all suck. All of God, them what a fucking What a fucking depressing division. I'm so glad we get so many main events with them. Oh, God, it's so fucking annoying. Because what was it recently it... where they were the co-main and were like, thank God it's not? Was it um, oh, San Hagen was it? and Cheeto? Yeah, it might have been. And there was like, thank God the heavyweights. No, that was Holly Holm versus Yana Santos. Um, hold on. Mm. Hold on. Jan Devalishvili, I think, had Volkov Romanov as their co-main. Who did? Uh, Jan versus Marab. Oh. Yes, you're right. Love to see it. Which as it should have been, right? Yeah, oh, 100%. Yeah. Yeah. And Volkov sucks. And that fight sucked. That was a yeah. joke. I mean, that was fun. It was so, just so funny. It was so heavyweight. I loved yeah. that fight. It's just, yeah. I called that to a T. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, fucking Brad God. Tavares loses again. Oh, fucking job, yeah, that was a shame. Brad just like, sucks. I like Bruno Silva. Bobby Green, I think he's cool. Jared Gordon. Love both those guys. Headbutt. No contest headbutt. That was tough. Um, I want to talk to you about because well, we'll get into 288 next week and we'll talk about Bilal Gilbert and the welterweights. That's next yep. week's discussion. Um, I don't really want to talk about anything else major coming up because the cards after that are like Johnny Walker, Anthony Smith in a co-main, Rosenstruck and Almeida in a main. Of, like, fuck off. You Ian don't want Gary to talk about... The the undercard's great on that one. I can't yeah. like Ian Gary, Ro- D Rod, Tim Means. Yeah, like that's a good Morono, fight. Mackenzie Dern, Angela Hills. What the fuck? This undercard's way. Why is that the main event? Why is that the because main event? Because they're heavyweights, man. You don't understand clearly. They're, Dude, they're heavyweights and light heavyweights. I'd rather watch Ian Gary and D Rod in five rounds. I'd rather watch Mackenzie Dern, Angela Hill for five rounds. 
Actually, that's a good fight. Like, without a shred Dan of irony. Angel Hill? I would, that's, like... Oh, but, I mean, Strawweight's the only good female yeah. division. That's a good yeah, 100%. Division. Yeah, I like, I like that fight. That's a, <laughs> Mackenzie Dan Angel is a good fight. Matt Brown's yeah. on the prelims, bro? What I know. I Carlos know. Ulberg is also oh, on the prelims. Nice. I didn't even see him. Nice. Cody Stamen. If that's what I'm yep. thinking of. Stamen. Yep, it is. G- Jessica Rose Clark's opening the prelims. Aussie Kiwi. Love to see it. Ian Gary's there. It's a good undercard. Main event sucks. It's yeah. A good undercard. They do that a lot. They do that. Like, if you look at the card for Nunez Pena. The fights on there are pretty good. Kitata yeah, Ladze is like bad. I'd happily... Yeah. Dan Ige, Nate Landwehr, Matt that, Schnell. That, we love that fighter you made up. <laughs> we love yeah, that my, my character creator fighter. Well, he's... That's not a real name. Obviously. You know what I mean? No, 100%. Obviously. Um, um, if there's one thing we love on Switching Stances, it is xenophobia. Um, yeah. Yeah. And... Exactly. <laughs> well, you're writing your dissertation on it. <clears throat> exactly. Um, I'll use this as a source. I'll cite this. Yeah. <laughs> cite this. Dude, that next week, man, it's tough. Raquel Pennington, Irene Aldana. You yeah. know, five round main event. Fuck off. Fuck. Yeah, tell off. you what, they haven't done, they haven't even given that undercard the effort either. The, like, that is an Filio unbalanced Buckley. fucking card, if I've ever seen one. Michael Johnson's opening the main card. That's nice. Karolina yeah. Kovacavich is the prelim. Latifi? He's still fighting? I thought he retired. Chase Hooper? That's a weird card. That's such yeah. a cursed card. Wacky. And it's in the A. It's got to be in the Apex. That's an Apex oh, card. Of 100% it's an Apex. An Apex card. Yeah. Whereas you just can Vegas. tell the week before with like Ian Gary, Mackenzie Dern on like not the main events. That's obviously in front of a crowd. Matt Brown, Stamen, Allberg. Yeah, that's a just gross clock. That's a one hundred percent. That's in front of a crowd. Um, see it. Yeah, I mean, then then Dana White decided he'd do a little press a little presser or like what's it called, like a little promotion yeah. video. Um, yeah. And he's like, guys, I've got some really exciting matchups to announce. You've got yeah. five more middleweight main events. Have fun. Yes, you do. Yeah. Um, you have Marvin Vittori, Jared Cannonier. Now that's cool. That's that's a fight which I feel like it's already happened three times. I know. I'm, I was like, didn't they just fight? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when I saw it, I was like, did they not just fight? Or is it just that Robert Whitaker and Israel Adesanya have cleaned them? Yeah, it's but, just that. Yeah. Yeah. Like I forget that Costa and Vittori fought all the time because it just feels like middleweights don't fight oh, anyone they... that isn't those two. Yeah, that's true. It's weird, how eh? Vittori, Cannonier, Strickland. And Costa. Strickland. Are those just Stri- four guys that sit below Rob and Izzy that just feel like the gatekeeper guardians of the top two. Yeah. And Strickland's just fighting a dude. Like, this guy's had Which one I- fight in the UFC. Yeah, I sort of love it. It feels like a Strickland main event. I'm so, I hate Strickland main events so much, man. Yeah. Why? Well, it's Why an, do we need the five eight, rounds? Sure it the, I don't think eight, it is, man. Because it, it's, it's oh, Las man. Vegas... 47 so it's not fight yeah. night 2-2 two, two. like I think the Vegas cards normally have fight night 2 something but maybe I'm just trying Jack to Jack Manson Brendan Allen that's tough main event Jesus Christ and that's in between like 289 Amanda Nunes cool. who gives a fuck at least Oliveira Darius has been added to that um Danny Gay's on there Cleo Roundtree Chris Curtis is back Oh, nice. Wow, I like Curtis. Curtis is back. Yeah, he's, who's he fighting? I mean, he's finding someone cool, isn't he? Imavov. Yeah, that's cool. That's yeah. a cool fight. I mean, I don't really like Chris Curtis all that much. Uh, boo. Oh, no, but it's all right. Um, just to get back on that Strickland thing, it is totally from the apex. Yeah, it has to be, bro. You can't. You got to, you've got to, you've got to hear. You've Dude, got to there's a have, lot of fight. You've got to have the right. Twitter moment. You've got to have the Twitter moment where you can capture a bit of Sean Strickland's audio as he's saying yeah. like "fuck you, man" Dude, in the octagon. Yeah. That'll go viral. We're definitely hitting. We're definitely hitting a busy period. There's just going to be fights every week. Not all good, but there's fights every week. Yeah. And then you've got like after Cannonier Vitor, you've got literally like four middleweight men events in a row, but with a pay per view in between, like Hamanson Allen. Then it's 289. Then it's Vittori yeah. Cannonier, 
Oh, sorry. Then it's Josh and Ilya Teporia, which we yeah. love that fight. Then it's Sean Strickland, Magomedov, and then it's two ninety. Yeah. And let's talk again. About, it's a let's. Can we just talk about two ninety? I know we've got obviously time. No, fuck it. Let's go, man. Because to the, preview it, but like the cards won't look the same when it comes around. And the and the main topic I wanted to talk to you about is a part of this card. Oh yeah. And I don't want to spend too much time because we will at the time talking about Volk. Yair, because yep. what's there to say? Volk wins easily. Um, sure. Volk dominates, Volk decimates, Volk destroys, Volk smash. Do you see Craig Jones yeah. put up a little picture? We do know. Um, like, Taekwondo isn't real. Get me excited. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Love to see it. Love to see that Craig Jones is working with uh, Jack Della Maddalena as well. Yeah. Like, he's in his camp right now. You love that. I fucking love Craig Jones, bro. Yeah, I'm such a fan. Love the boys. Love the boys. Um, Kome, Brendan Moreno, Pantoja, great fucking fight, dude. Yeah. Brendan Moreno fights. We love Brendan Moreno fights. That's a great main in Kome. Yeah, 100%. Great main in Kome. And there'll probably Robbie be something Lillard else Nika. on there. I, yeah, I'd be oh, surprised if we don't get a women's title fight on there. Y- yeah, I mean, maybe. I mean, um, do you get the Valentina rematch? I think you do. I think you do Valentina, um... I've forgotten Dude, the girl's name. That's that's, that's <laughs> huge. What's her name? What's I've forgotten the girl's name. What's what's the what's the current flyweight champion? Um um oh my fucking god, why am I forgetting her name? Um Hold on. Um oh my god. What's wrong with this? This is what we do. <laughs> what are we do? what's wrong with us? What's her name? Oh my god. <laughs> uh I was about I was, I was about to say, um No, go on. Alexa Grasso. Oh my god! I was. Can I, I had Irene something? Aldana on my list. I wasn't for the even close. Time. I wasn't even close. You know what I mean? Like that was <laughs> just going to come to Alexa Grasso, dude. Don't even worry about it. Not that. You know? <laughs> At least you're. You were going to say the, another Mexican-born fighter. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I sure wasn't. Um, yes, Alexa Grasso rematch with Valentina Shevchenko. I think that works. I think that works. Not that you need it because, I mean, this no, other you card, you're going to have Jack Della Maddalena, Sean Brady, great fucking fight. That'll probably be the featured prelim, you'd imagine. I don't think that makes the main card, bro. Especially if you have the women's <sighs> title fight. Might not, eh? Might not. Dan Hooker, Jalen Turner. Big fight. Yeah. Robbie Lawler and Nico Price will definitely be on the prelims, unfortunately, but it'll be a banger prelim. The prelims will be a banger for two minutes. For this card. I think Robbie Lawler is at a point where. Nico Price will just violently kill him. Sadly, I love Lawler. Um, I don't think I, just... you, I don't think you know, I don't think you know anything. I don't think when you know when has Robbie, Robbie Lawler, Lawler looked like? Good I don't think recently. I don't think you know anything about Robbie Lawler. <laughs> you definitely know more you know. about Robbie Lawler mm, four years ago. But if we look Robbie at Robbie Lawler, Lawler today. Is a best. Robbie Lawler is a former champion that rises to occasions. It is International Fight Week. He is going into the Hall of Fame that weekend for the greatest mixed martial arts contest of all time. His second fight with Rory McDonald, which was at International Fight Week 2015, UFC 189, in the co yeah. event. Five rounds for the undisputed UFC welterweight championship. Robbie Lawler will harness. That energy from the MMA gods, and he will finish Nico Price inside two rounds. I want to, at the end of the year, I want to go back. At the end of the year, I want to go back and tally up our predictions and see who's been more on the ball with them. Yeah, but it's tough because I'm so biased. Oh, yeah. Logic goes out the window. But, like, yeah, but, like, I don't want to start making, like, safe, boring predictions. I'm quite enjoying it. Sort I mean, Robbie Lawler's I'm picking risk. Robbie Lawler all day. Dan Hooker beats Jalen Turner. Jalen Turner t- <laughs> doesn't, loser. though, does he? Um, um, yeah, he does. Dan Hooker ah, by, doesn't. Anzac, by Anzac finish. Um, <laughs> How, what's, what's, do you know what Jalen Turner's record against Anzac's is? I don't want to know. He's it's the four Anzac and oh. killer, isn't he? It's 4 and 0. Soon to be 5. Soon to be 5. Soon to be 4 and 1. Dan Hook is going to fuck him up. I'm not worried about this. Fight. Okay, I, I want to know how much you believe that. I believe it with all of my heart and soul. Sure. I believe it as much that I am 
half a kiwi, which is one hundred percent true. Sure. Okay. Well, and yeah. Fuck okay. Jalen Turner. This can be such a fun. Jalen Turner can <laughs> have you, I hope Jalen Turner fucking stubs his toe on the way to the cage. I hope he breaks I his would, leg in there. I would love no, nothing I more. I, I hope he stubs his more. toe, but I don't hope he breaks his leg. I would love nothing more than for Dan Hooker to win. He will win. I mean, there, actually, there's definitely some things I'd love more, but um, there's not much I'd love more. No, I, I'd be I'd be a big fan of Dan Hooker winning that. Um, yeah. But I just don't think it's gonna happen. I think it will. Um, the, the there's one other fight, and this is the main gets onto the main subject I want to talk about. I want to talk about the new middleweight champion of the world, Israel Adesanya. Um, obviously, coming off his massive win against Alex Pereira. Yeah. Um, you're an easy interim. hater. You hate it. Um. And yeah, interim because the real champion is fighting on this card, mm-hmm. defending against uh, <laughs> duplicity <laughs> of all kinds of people. Uh, Robert Whitaker, Drickus Duplessis. I mean, this is a joke of a fight, if you ask me. It's so funny. I I, I mean, I think this should this open was. The I this was the fight. This was the fight I that I had. That I after Duplessis versus Brunson, I was like, right, have him fight Whitaker, because it would be so funny. Robert Whitaker, this is legal murder. Yeah. Rob is gonna fuck him up, bad, very bad. Yeah. It's gonna be nasty. And it's Dana be... said, and I've ne- I've not heard Dana say this. He's literally like booking it like he's Vince McMahon in WWE. I mean, you may as well. Like, it's not like you know who's going to win this fight. Like, yeah. you've just picked a fight and you know who's going to win. Um, where he said the the winner of this fight will fight at the end of the year, October November, in Sydney, Australia, Israel Adesanya for the middleweight championship. Yeah, clear. Yeah, is... num- this is a guaranteed number one contender fight and I mean that's just lining up Rob is he three in yeah. Australia once again which is I can't wait for excited about want to see Whitaker take the belt back though I love Izzy this um, one middleweight Whitaker King has the belt Whittaker. let's not fuck around here yeah. sorry well yeah you well, see he has, he has Rob the lineal retain yeah. his undisputed status yes you're right sorry that's my bad um, but Izzy wants to fight Duplessis so bad. He yeah. Talked about him on his podcast the other day. Um, he is just talked about Human. him in the, obviously without naming names. The post fight press conference. Love the way he did that. Love the way he did yeah. that. Selling his next fight while also like in a way where we knew who he was talking about. Clearly, clearly knew who he was talking about without saying his name and putting a bit of a story to it. Um, that's some fucking theater, and I love that shit. So. But the problem is, it's just not going to happen. Because he's talking no. about, like, the disrespect and sort of become a bit racial with the Africa thing. And I, I I mean, really, it's just they've both blown it out of proportion because they're both saying they said things they didn't say and are, like, acting up in their own heads. It's like they're both having arguments in their heads with each other. Man, if he says this, then I'm going to say this. But then he'll say, like, half of that, and then you'll say the same response, like you said. I, you know what? I, I actually think Izzy's on the money here, to be honest. Like I mean, for the for, most part, a, he's on the money. I think there's. I don't think that's what Duplessis meant. Mm, I think Duplessis sort knows of fucked up when doing. he was. Ex- yeah, maybe. Maybe. I think he. I think he. I just. Thought, I just that... think Duplessis too sort of stupid. Um, but maybe you're right. Thing is, maybe thing is know. right. He's not that stupid. I thought it was just like he. He'll. He'll have these stupid fights where he looks like a bumbling idiot, and then he'll. He'll get on the mic and he'll be like, "Oh man, that minute in round two. Uh, I you know I threw this combination, and you're like this what? Combination. Why does he sound like you're? Because I, I can't because I can't do it. I can't do South African man. It's sort of similar. It's <laughs> it's sort not, of though, is it? It's sort not of, similar. Sort of similar. It's not similar. That's um, like an American saying. Australians and English people sound similar. Yeah, it is like that, isn't it? You're so right, but um, yeah. sadly I can't do a South African accent, and I didn't want to just okay. do Duplessis as English. It wouldn't sound right. Yeah. Um. But yeah, he, he's he's got weird clarity of mind in at least in his fights. Um, I think I think Duplessis knew what he was saying when he was like, "Oh, they're not the real African champs. I'll be the first 
you know, champ from Africa, fighting out of Africa, yeah. who is African yeah. in his day to day life. I think he knows exactly what he's doing as a white South African, um, and I think he's doing it yeah. to stir to stir the pot, which is fine because you're like you're trying to sell a fight. I don't like, like I get it. I get why he's saying it, um, and it makes me you know it makes him a heel to Izzy. It makes me want to see Izzy kick his head in as much as I would adore if Duplessis beat Izzy just for the fucking lols. Yeah, a hundred percent. It would be so funny. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. I mean, I would love to see. Well, the fact is, whoever Duplessis would fight, Rob or Izzy, you're watching him get. It's an episode of Bully Beatdown. Yeah. Um, so either way, pick your poison. Um, I would have loved to have seen Izzy do it. That would have been fucking sick. Um, especially if it was like that first African card that like Dan's yeah. been looking for. Would have been Which crazy. it wouldn't be because they'd fuck it up. Yeah. Which is a shame. But. But I sort of also like that Rob just gets to do it and be like, no, 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 no. There's no other contenders. <laughs> no. There's only one number mm-hmm. one contender for this title. And Rob's just going to manhandle Duplessis so fucking badly. Yeah. I just don't even know where he's threatened. Like, I know I might be speaking out of turn because it's fighting and anything can happen, right? But, like, I just genuinely don't know any way this... Rob doesn't destroy him. Uh, I like Duplessis powerful. Is the only thing I can even see. But he's also is not he like that crazy. Powerful? Is he he's not that like, powerful? He's not. No, that's the thing. He's not crazy powerful. If if Rob weathered he's the storm, not crazy of, powerful. If Rob weathered the storm of Yoel Romero, Yoel Romero, and, and for Jared fifty Kananir, minutes, yeah, for fifty minutes, Yoel Romero, yeah. Like I can't. Like obviously, Vittori, obviously Kananir. there is there is the chance that. Duplessis lunges in with some meme strike and clips Rob at the right time, and he goes down. And it's enough the to make me ner- It's enough to make me nervous. Have is Derek Brunson. Yeah, and look at how those and... two fights went. Yeah, and that was like a better Derek Brunson, in the sense that Derek Brunson was quite old when fighting. Yeah, true. Um, Duplessis, like better technically, but also very old. And sort of one for out the door. Yeah, true. True. Um. Yeah, but Izzy's calling for that fight, but I just Izzy, it's no, over. It's, the fight's yeah. happening. There's no way Izzy thinks he like he's like, please win. It's like right, there's no way. There's no, no way he, he can think uh, that. I think he knows that though. I think that's why he's like, please win. Come on, man. I think that's why he's saying <laughs> it so much wanna... now because I feel like this is the only time he's going to get to like talk shit. The only way he can beat him is like verbally beat him down. Yeah. So I think he's like taking the chance while he can to verbally just destroy him because he knows he's probably never going to get to fight him. He can fight him um, when Rob takes the title. True. That's a good point. You know, when, when Rob's champ. Well, when Rob beats that fight. Izzy yeah. in Sydney, in his hometown, Sydney, Australia. Dude, that's going to be wild, bro. Imagine yeah. Rob coming out now. And then you do... Oh, dude. Do do you do? No, you can't. I was about to say, do you do Volk Islam too? Oh, you totally could, eh? No, you can't because Volk Volk's gonna beat in your year, and then Islam's gonna fight in, in Abu Dhabi. The, the like probably like two weeks before the card. They'll probably be the yeah. two October cards that they oh, do. Oh, you're probably right. So it'll probably be a few weeks before. So I reckon Volk will be waiting for Islam to win against whoever he defends against, and then it'll be like February again. Did you hear, by the way, that um, Volk got offered the Islam fight? Yeah, and he declined it for yeah, yeah. Well, he would have had to wait till October. Yeah, and he would have had to vacate the featherweight. <sighs> yeah, that would have sucked. Yeah, so I'm happy with what he's doing because I'm like, it makes yeah. no difference. He'll be yeah, yeah, easily. So yeah, whatever. Who cares? Hundred percent. Yeah, let him fight. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Let him remind everyone he's pound pound number one. Yeah. Um, and then get on with it. Get on with it. Rematch. Volk I'd like to. It. I'd like to very quickly. Um, give some props to the life and death of Davidson Figueredo versus Manel Cape. Um, that oh, fight was made. Yeah, that fight was made for about two minutes. 
before <laughs> before Figueredo had to pull out. Oh, um, I, didn't, I didn't hear about the pullout. Yeah, he's he's injured or he's not medically cleared. So, <laughs> lol. I mean, the, K- I mean, Capers there's still going to had... be so many um, announcements for fights on yeah. this particular card because, like, we're previewing a card that's two months away because there's no other good cards. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> um, but a lot of announcements, a lot of stuff going on. Um, in the meantime. Um, did you watch Davis Garcia? I, no, you know what? I tried to, it was at like 3am my time and I tried to watch it and the, but like the hour of commentators talking to each other yes. beforehand Watching just like made me go to bed. Um, I've seen the finish. I've seen the, the discourse around the finish of people being oh, like, dude, oh, he people, quit, people, what a bitch. Like, how are you going to quit from Well, those are people that have never fought yeah. before or even trained or even been yeah. hit before. These are people that think they're tough because they watch fighting, but they've never been mm-hmm. hit before or thrown a punch. Or they've done it with their mates in the backyard and think that's real fighting. Like, yeah. you're a fucking dork and shut the fuck up. You know, Ryan Garcia's gotten in there many times. Champion. Uh, I love what the, both those guys did. Um for boxing by fighting yeah. each other. Yeah, there was still, of course, a bit of bullshit negotiations with the rehydration clauses, all that bullshit that boxing, comes to boxing, but it's, at least they fought each other. Two guys undefeated, best of the best, big stars, fought each other. Not after their prime, not years later, not when one had a clear advantage. They fought when they both called for it. And I, I just loved it. And it did very well financially. I enjoyed watching the build-up through the week with the interviews. And I'm a big... I like Ryan Garcia. I was rooting for him. But, dude, you got hit so fucking hard to the body. And your body just shuts down. You don't have a choice. Yeah. You don't have a choice. And he's sitting there. It's like, I literally, like, I can't physically stand up. I want to, but I can't. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think it's, um... it's like an Arnold Allen thing. I think he's going to get better from this. And I'd like to see him rematch down the road, but I, you, you know, you'd want to. It'd be long down the road. It wouldn't be anytime soon. Four or five fights away. Yeah, I don't. I don't know my boxing well enough, but I understand from yeah. people that are into combat sports that this was a big thing. Um, and yeah, I mean, I, I saw most people picking Tank. Yeah, it was like your head versus your heart type thing. Yeah. yeah absolutely. But yeah, that was the week. And I think that's probably it for this episode. Hey, guys? Yeah, I um, mean... There uh, was still a fair bit to cover. Yeah, I mean, I didn't watch the Bellator um, Bantamweight. No, no, who did? I know Patchy Mix won it. And I know... I I saw... Yeah. I saw the knee. I saw the end of the one... Uh, what's, it, who's, what's his name? Haggerty versus Nongo. I saw that. Um, I thought that was cool, oh, yeah. uh, but I don't the have Muay Thai? Some, yeah, yeah, that I don't have enough awesome. of like a a staple. Neither do I. In but I watched the I watched the one fight. Muay Thai. It was fucking sick, Haggy yeah. with the, apparently the upset of the year. I'm like, I don't know my Muay Thai says the guy about to have a Muay Thai fight. Um, yeah, but yeah, yeah, it's a great weekend of combat sports for the most yeah. part. Um, and some big fights coming, big fights coming. So, yes, thank you everyone for tuning into this episode of Switching Stances. Be sure to mm-hmm. like. This, if you're watching on YouTube and subscribe to our YouTube channel, follow us on Instagram, Twitter, our social medias, and rate us on podcast services. Appreciate you all watching. We will see you next week as we preview UFC 288, um, which is Aljamain Sterling versus Henry Cejudo for the Bantamweight Championship of the World. We'll see you then. Thank you. Goodbye.